to the Lord in prayer. Father, we would like to thank you that in these days, when we're thinking about resources and wealth, which dominate many minds in our world, we pray that you would lead us, that you would speak uh, your thoughts into our hearts so that our mind, our worldview on resource, on wealth is biblical, is from you. And the way we engage the issues of money would be from you. We pray that you'll help us this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, uh, Pastor Magaya led us in, in thinking about uh, one of our first principles as we've, we've begun to study the issues of money and wealth and resources. He, he led us to think about the fact that God owns everything. Everything belongs to God. Therefore, we actually come to, to wealth, to, to resources, to, to, to money, uh, and, and we, we deal with it as stewards, as a people who have been given. Do you know that even the 10%, the many, many, some people think uh, that, that uh, the, any time you preach, you preach uh, tithing, you are trying to, you, uh, to, to, to just think money. But actually, I think God puts the principle of tithing to remind us that all of it belongs to him. So that when we bring a tenth, we are recognizing that the 90 as well belongs to God. Some people think if I just give God his 10, it doesn't matter what I do with the 90. No, 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 no. The 10 is supposed to help you to appreciate this is a, a gift from God. This is all belongs to God. And he's, uh, he's leaving you the 90 to use it really still to he, give him honor. I am a steward of my resources. Today, we'd like to think about the second principle in thinking about money, you think about wealth, the, the fact that God expects his people to work. Why is this an important thing in this point at where to think for the child of God? It's important to think about, uh, to, to, to appreciate that God expects us to work because first of all, it is the way to plug it to God's provision. It is a way to plug into God's provision. What do I mean? I mean that the number one way God provides for us from the very beginning is through work. And from the very beginning, God intended his people to work. Even as we read Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, he's telling Adam, he's, it, the text tells us, the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. From the very beginning, God intended his people to work. Of course, we know that the fall in chapter 3 messed up what that means. So that work ceased to have its, its, its sense of blessing. Uh, and sometimes it's a, it, 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 that, it, it ceased to, be, uh, uh, the, the, to have its, its uh, pleasure that was designed from the very beginning. But from the very beginning, God intended his people to work. So God let people work. So that's one reason we must appreciate this principle is because this is the way to plug into God's resources. You know that God has done miracles of provision for his people as they went through uh, uh, the, land of, uh, the, 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 the land of slavery to the land of promise. There were daily provisions that came as really literally droppings from the sky. Special provision. But you know what? As soon as they get into the land of promise, they have to work for their daily provision. I, I have been privileged to visit Israel and see matoke, matoke that is bigger than what they grow in my beautiful home in Bukoya. Being grown in the desert, I've been privileged to see watermelon grown in the desert, bigger than a lot of watermelon we grow here. And, and you know, right there, God's people working even in this, in this land. Because God's number one way to, to provide for us is through work. So if you just uh, holy, uh, in, in Luganda, they call it okulele ingalo. If you're just there nursing your hands, you haven't understood how God has designed to provide for our welfare. 
The second reason is that hard work and poverty don't always hang together. You want to chase away poverty? You want to reap profit? Work. Proverbs 14, 23, 24 says, All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. The wealth of the wise is their crown, but the folly of the fools yields folly. Simply said, you need to work and work hard. You can't just talk, keep talking about grand plans in the sky. And there are people who are good at, at talking about these beautiful and grandiose plans and only mere talk. If it's only mere talk, poverty is going to be your neighbor. It's going to be your housemate. He says, just talk is, leads to poverty. The third reason why this principle is, is critical is because when we work, we can be a blessing to others instead of being a burden to them. The Apostle Paul says that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep out from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not Live according to the teaching you received from us. He's quite, the Apostle Paul is quite stern here. A brother who's not working, who is not willing to work, stay away from him. Wow, just idle, stay away from idle people, he says. Wow. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. He says we are not idle when we are with you. No, 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 did we eat anyone's food without paying for it? On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling so that it would not be a burden to any of you. Why is the Apostle Paul working? So that he's a blessing instead of being a burden. He says, we did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to suffer ourselves, to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. As the preacher of the gospel, the apostle Paul had the right to, to be taken care of by those he was ministering to. Even that right, he surrendered so that he can be a model for work. And then he says, even, for, even when we are with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. That's quite tough. I, I, I grew up in the village. And I had, there are some, <laughs> there are some guys in our village who just had an amazing way of timing our lunch time. And as soon as it was about lunch time, they would show up as special guests. And of course, the generosity of the African culture, they were always welcome. And I'm not telling you, I'm not saying you shouldn't be welcoming guys like that. I'm just saying, don't be one of those guys. Because when we're with you, he says, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work should not eat. Now, there are many young people in this audience. Allow me to speak to you. You come, you live in a home where somebody wakes up in the morning to go to work so that this electricity is paid, so that the water is paid, so that there's food on the table. If you just come home 
to eat and sleep, today is a day of repentance for you. You have to make a contribution to where God has placed you. There are homes where you have young people in the home the whole day. Mommy comes home at the end of the day and the sink is still full. Mommy comes home at the end of the day and the house is still dirty. And she thinks, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm just tired, I don't want to scream with these kids. And mommy cleans the house. And mommy cleans the sink. If you are here and that's the way you're living, it's a time for repentance. Because you want to be a blessing to your mother. You want to be a blessing to your uncle. You want to be a blessing to whoever the leader of that home is. Then tomorrow when they go, their mind is fresh to bring to work for the welfare of your home again. When you work, you are a blessing instead of being a burden. Some families have, are full of people. And the leaders of those homes feel the burden. Because they take, they don't bring. If you're in the home, young man, young lady, ask yourself, what a contribution am I making to this home? The Apostle Paul taught this, but he modeled it as well. It wasn't just words. So we appreciate that God expects us to work because, number four, we bear testimony. If you do not work, you compromise your Christian testimony. The Apostle Paul says again, now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other, and in fact, you do love all God's family throughout Macedonia. We urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders so that you will not be dependent on anybody. So that when believers work, they win the respect of outsiders. I talked to a businessman several months ago who said, for me, I really don't want to hire Balokole in my business. They are terrible workers. What a bad testimony. You, people should be saying, me, I want to hire Balokole because they are hard workers. They don't eat. They, 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 they work for their pay. And one of the reasons the Apostle Paul invites us to be serious about work is so that we may re win the respect of outsiders. Uh, there are many WhatsApp that make, WhatsApps that make the rounds these days. One of the WhatsApps that is making rounds these days goes something like this. It says, if you don't work, you'll spend all your life in church shouting, I receive, I receive. Now, please, don't misunderstand me. I'm not disparaging prayer. There's a clear call in the scriptures for the believer to live a prayerful life. We're invited to bring our every concern, our every need to the Lord, and God promises to answer our prayers. In fact, prayer is a basic for a Christian. It's like breathing. We pray when we are walking. We pray when we lie down. We pray when we are on our desk working. We, we, we are this constant communion with God for a child of God because prayer is a basic. But it's not an excuse for idle living. And when we work, 
the Bible says, we win the respect of outsiders. And number five, and lastly, we are productive instead of being destructive. The writer of Proverbs in chapter 18, verse 9 says, the one who is slack in his work is a brother to one who destroys. The one who is slack in his, in his work is a brother to one who destroys. In chapter 21 of Proverbs, verse 25, it says, The craving of a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. All day long he craves some more, but the righteous give without sparing. You see, the sluggard, the lazy man, the one who doesn't work, or the lazy woman who doesn't work, they're constantly looking at others. Now, I was coming from the border yesterday. Uh, I, was, I was at the border. Uh, I drove a, 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 a nice car from the organization I was representing. And uh, so these guys that... Uh, it was a brand new, well, literally brand new car, as, uh, as uh, these guys who change money at the border. Um, I wanted to pay for something in Uganda shillings, so I had some Kenya shillings. I went and to exchange the shillings. And he's greeting, he's talking to me, and he says, eh, do you, do you, do you have any, do you have ever, ever experienced any pain in this world? Eh? He looks, he just... <laughs> He can't imagine that I ever go through any challenges looking at the kind of car I am driving. You see, there's a temptation to always think everybody else is okay except you. And when you do not work, this constant comparison between you and other people grows. The sluggard keeps craving all day. They keep seeing those who are ahead of them. Not as an example to, to improve their hard work, but purely as a way to, to crave. But then see the comparison. He says, but the righteous give without sparing. The righteous, because they work, they have something to share. When we work, we are productive instead of being destructive. Let me read another verse for you. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 again, he says, we hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy, they are busy bodies. Now the Luganda version says it this way. Tebakora mirimu jawe nakatono wabuli jabalala. Huh? They are busy they are not busy, but they are busy bodies. They are not working, but they are busy. Concerned about everybody's eh, story. They know everybody's story in the village except theirs. They know what the other guy should have done. If he had planted it there, it would have been... Eh, and then you ask, where did you plant yours? They are not busy. They are busy bodies. And then he has, verse 12, the Apostle Paul has a very tough language. He says, such people, we command you in the Lord Jesus Christ, we command in the Lord Jesus to sit, sit down and earn the food they eat. Ask your neighbor, are you earning your food? Ask your neighbor, are you earning your food? 
And then he says, as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of what doing what is good. Now, I just want you to appreciate the two groups here. here. There are people who are just busybodies. They are doing nothing. And then those who are working, and because they're working, they're able to share. Now, it is possible to get tired of helping and to become wary of doing good. Now, I wish I could tell you the real story, the way it happened, but I, I'm going to give you a, a pictures of it for, for purposes of not uh, disclosing too much information. There's a guy in this church who was dealing with a particular situation, and I said to him, don't put your money in that situation. I know that person has a need, but it is your, not your need to solve. But just looking at the factors, I told him, please don't get involved. But he was so, he, self, he was a good brother. And so, he got involved. And the thing backfired. And he, he, he paid more money, five, five times more money than he added, put in the beginning because he was not giving with wisdom and had given him a warning. I wanted to say to him, hey, hey but I didn't. Because sometimes we, we need to listen to counsel. But, but you know what? He said, me, I am not touching another person's problem ever. Sometimes when your giving goes a little sour, you can start getting tired of being good to other people. And the Apostle Paul is saying, don't be tired of doing good. You, you may have a few bad experiences in, in being gracious to other people. They should not cause you to be hard-hearted. Because the busy bodies are going to be there. And they are part of our life. But you, brother, if you are a busybody, repentance today. If you are one of those brothers who are working, don't get tired of doing what is good. Take special note of anyone who does not obey our instruction in this letter. Do not associate with them in order that they may feel ashamed. Yet do not regard them as an enemy, but warm them as you would a fellow believer. In other words, allow some people... Okay, let me put it a different way because I could be, be misunderstood. If you are going to make a mistake in giving, you'd rather be wrong being gracious than being hard-hearted. Do you hear me? But at the same time, what this text is saying is that some brothers need to, and sisters need to experience. Okay. Let me put it a different way. I'm just wanting to make sure that I'm positive. Not all giving is good to the person given. That's why the, the text is saying, you let some brothers <laughs> feel ashamed. If you're always bailing them out, hey, when do they learn? I'm not saying never bail them out, but if you're bailing them out every month, maybe you need to be sitting with them and saying, what can we do to solve this problem? So, when we are, we, we work, we are productive. We even have ideas for people to suggest, why don't you do this? What, how can we do this together? Five things from our text today. God expects you to work. Why? Because that's the way he's designed for us to plug into his provision for our life. Two, God expects us to work because that's one way to run out pro pro from poverty because hard work is profitable. You rarely find hard work and helplessness and poverty 
living with one another. Be a blessing to others. If you work, you can be a blessing. If you don't work, you are always... Some brothers see you and they say, ha, he's come again. Four, if you work, you bear testimony. If you don't work, if you're lazy, you compromise the testimony of a Christian community. Number five, when you work, you're productive instead of being destructive. I want us to close with prayer. But if you're here and you don't have work and you're looking for work, I'd like to ask that you stand. If, you just, if you're here and you really don't have work yet, uh, just stand so we can pray. Our Heavenly Father, we like to thank you for our brothers and our sisters who desire work. You are the God who is connected to it all. Cattle on a, th uh, on a thousand hills belongs to you. Everything is yours. So we pray for the right connections for our brothers and sisters that would offer the opportunity for work. Lord, some of them don't need to be employed. They just need to work. They need to have the wisdom on how to invest. They need to have the wisdom on how to apply their time in meaningful ways. And so we pray for those that need that kind of wisdom to, on, to know how to, to use their God-given gifts to raise resources for them and their family. We pray that you provide that wisdom as well. Lord, we pray for that you'd open doors of work. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. If you're here and you just say, you know, I am working. I just need God's hand of blessing on my, life, on my work. I need wisdom. I need to, to take this to the next, next level. I just need to, to see God. Uh, his hand in the things I am doing. And if you, that's what your prayer is, we'll just stand and we can pray as well. Lord, you've given us opportunities for work. And even as you work, we work, there are many ways in which you can open doors of blessing beyond our scripted salaries and so we pray for ourselves for our brothers and our sisters asking that you open doors of provision that you apply and bless the work of their hands we pray that none of us will be in need that instead will be people that have have something to share with others. Lord, be pleased to bless our businesses. Be pleased to bless our work in our workplaces. Be ple pleased to, gi to give us favor in the, in the workplace. Be pleased to increase everything that we touch in our workplace. Lord, we look to you. Help us to honor you with our wealth in the process in the, in, as we do that as well. We ask that you'll be pleased to bless the work of our hands through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.